why aren't my bees making honey? That's a question that I get asked a lot by new beekeepers. And it's really a question that I asked myself when I first started beekeeping. I had this idea that if I kept bees in a box that every day they'd just be going out, getting nectar and turning it into honey. And after beekeeping for a little bit, I came to find out that's really not the case at all. Nectar is sort of like the bee's paycheck. And most of the bees we have, they're just living paycheck to paycheck. They're getting just enough to survive. And there's certain times a year when all the conditions line up, the rainfall, the weather, the bees health, the plants, and these conditions cause what we call a nectar flow. And that's when such an abundance of nectar is coming in that the bees are able not only to survive, but to also start putting some of their paycheck into their savings account. And that's what honey is to the bees. It's when they're storing up extra resources, extra nectar to save for later. And so today I want to talk about knowing your nectar flows. I keep my bees in the Tampa Bay, Florida area, and most of our bees are right in the city in backyards on business properties. And one of the things I found regarding the nectar flow is it's just really amazing how the nectar flows can vary even from one neighborhood to the next. Um, even yards that are a couple miles apart, we can get completely different nectar flows. And so for me, it takes about two years of having a bee yard to really start to um, understand and anticipate um, when to expect different nectar flows. I'm actually at a new bee yard here in Terracia, which is just on the south side of the Sunshine Skyway. It's a cool little neighborhood. It's basically a mangrove island with some neighborhoods in it. And um, so this is my first year. I brought these bees out last May. And so I got to experience the summer and the fall in winter seasons here, but I haven't been through a spring yet. And so I really don't have a, much of an idea what to expect. I do know there's a small orange grove right down the street from here. And there's also a lot of mangoes and lychee groves here on this island. And so that's um, some of the things I'm expecting the bees to be working. There's also a lot of sea grapes out here, which bloom in the springtime. And so um, not having gone through a season, I don't really know what to expect um, until we go through it. And so I'm just gonna go through these bees. They've been building up good and wanna see if there's nectar coming in. And if there is nectar coming in, I'm gonna put some queen excluders and some honey supers on. So if you can see all that glistening here in the sunlight, that's all fresh nectar coming in. And so there definitely is a nectar flow beginning out here at Terracia. And so some of the stronger colonies, we're gonna go ahead and put some honey supers on and try to get some honey made this spring. Sometimes I just like to take a scoop of that and eat it, put it under my veil. Mmm. That's one of the best perks of being a beekeeper. Get to taste that honey right out of the hive. And it is delicious. It tastes like orange blossom honey coming in right now. This is a really nice strong colony of bees. Got a double brood box and they're just really full of bees. This top's already heavy. So we're gonna put a super on it. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take a queen excluder here. And the queen excluder is just a meshing and um, the holes there, they're big enough for the worker bees to fit through, but they're too small for the queen to fit through. And that way the queen's not able to get up above it and to lay eggs in the top box and that will allow the worker bees to only store nectar and they will fill that up with nectar and turn it into honey and queen excluders are just a really convenient way to keep your honey and your brood separate so with that on we're going to get a honey super i have a super with nice drawn out wax and you will make a lot more honey if you're able to keep your your frames and your wax intact the bees, they won't have to build new wax. They'll just have to make any small repairs from where the cappings were cut off last honey harvest. And then they will just get to refill these with honey. There we go. We got this colony supered up and ready to begin catching the spring nectar flow. We do got nectar flowing in right now. Here in Terracia, we got this yard all supered up. There's a thunderstorm approaching and these bees know it. They are not too happy today. They 
really can tell when bad weather's coming, it's not the best time to be in the hives, but I tried to just get done what I need to get done today and now I'm gonna get out of here. So we'll be back here in a couple weeks and hopefully these honey supers will be filling up with nectar and getting capped off as honey. In beekeeping, there's some terminology that can be confusing. It seems like there's several different names for the same thing, especially when it comes to beekeeping equipment. And one of those is the word super. You probably heard me talking about honey supers and I know some of you guys are like, what's a super? Why is it called a honey super? And a honey super is just a bee box that's used for producing honey and rather than used for um, the bees to make brood in. And so why do we call it a honey super? And probably the reason is, is when you get a bee box full of honey, you just get this super rad feeling about it. It's awesome. And so probably some beekeeper experienced that super awesome feeling getting a box full of honey and just started calling all the honey boxes supers because it is super when you get a box of honey. If you know of another reason or the real reason, if that's not the reason, um, please leave a comment below and enlighten me because you know I don't know exactly why they call it a super, but um, that's what I assume. It's just super awesome when you get a box full of honey.